Okay, we should be going live on YouTube. Good evening, everyone. Hi there. Hopefully you can see and hear me. Um, I'm supposedly live on Facebook also, but uh, it's not showing anything. So if anybody is on Facebook, let me know. And let me know that you're here on uh, YouTube also. We'll give it a few minutes and uh, see if anybody comes on. Happy Valentine's Day. Um, I know most of you, hopefully you're with your loved one. Um, I'm alone, so I just thought maybe uh, there might be some of you out there that might want something to do tonight. I really didn't want to be alone, and most of you know why. So, anyway... Hey, John, how are you doing? All right, can you hear me okay on YouTube? Hey, Teresa, you can see in here. Yay, Team YouTube. <laughs> You're so cute. <laughs> All right, I supposedly am live on Facebook, but boy, it's not showing up at all. Hey, Robin. Hey, Pat. Hey, everybody. Happy Valentine's Day. Thanks for joining me. I figured most of you would be out to dinner with your loved ones. Um, like I said a few minutes ago, I am uh, alone, so I thought maybe you guys would want to spend it with me and uh, learn some brush strokes tonight, okay? All right, you can hear me good. All right. Yeah, I'm looking at YouTube, so I'm looking back and forth at my screens. I apologize. Um, YouTube is just spinning. I'm not sure what the deal is I may try to just go to my page and hit go live and see what happens with it Robert got a root canal today Teresa said oh well you're not going out to dinner then that's not a very nice Valentine's Day present Teresa did you schedule that for him <laughs> that's that's not funny but it is kind of funny so hold on let me show you if I can I don't know if it'll let me go live on YouTube with this. Um, it says to connect your streaming software. Okay, well, I've already done that. So, yeah, it's not going to work. Okay, we're just going to go forward on YouTube. Okay. Showing as going live in 15 seconds on Facebook. Okay, well, maybe it, uh, I have been going live earlier on Facebook because it usually takes quite a while, not seconds. It's been taking like 10 minutes to show up. So I set it for a few minutes early, hoping that it would go on. So uh, maybe it'll show up. Who knows? If somebody is out there and uh, sees it, that's great. Okay. So I hope you're all doing well. Let me put that keyboard up and uh, we'll get started. So Again, happy Valentine's Day, working on YouTube. Okay, great. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. You know, technology, can't live with it, can't live without it. So hopefully this will uh, do well. Okay, I just posted the picture of the tile. I did the cup and saucer 10 plus years ago in the booth. And um, it's kind of funny because that piece got broken at both of my samples, and uh, it's a joke, a running joke with me and Cindy Israels. But anyway, uh, I thought, you know, that's kind of a cool one. Sometimes I'm trying to bring back some of it. We've got so many new people that a lot of people don't know brush strokes, or maybe I do it a different way than somebody else does. So you can always learn something from someone. Uh, even if you just learn one thing, I always said that the class was worth taking if you learn one thing. So. Uh, hopefully. Hey, Ann Parcher, Marie, Pat. Okay, great. So I'm going to switch over to my overhead. Okay. And what I've got here, here's the tile that I just posted. Sometimes the photos don't turn out. They are different. This is a commercial tile. It's heavy too. It's a 12 by 12. And it's funny because usually, just FYI, commercial tiles usually require more glaze. Well, I only put two coats of clear glaze on this. And when I tilt this, you can kind of see it looks like starved or it's a little bit rough. And dummy me, I should have known to put a third coat on there. But it, what's funny is you can see see the pattern on the back of the tile. 
and this is made in Italy. I used to work for Hobby Colorobia, which was based out of Montelupo, Italy. I worked for them for five years as a contract teacher before I ended up working for Colors for Earth for five, and then I bought the Colors for Earth. So what I did was I taped off so that that terracotta shows. So it looked like this. This is just a terracotta pot that I got from the uh, like Home Depot Lowe's store. So there it is, matte finish with no glaze on it. And then you can see how nice and bright it is in here. So what I did was I took, this is called rainbow tape. I've used it for years when I do Raku to tape off designs. And of course, I'm not gonna be able to get a hold of it. Anyway, um, there we go. So I just taped off an area. Basically, it's like a mask and peel. You mask it off and then put your underglaze on and I did the same thing here just earlier. So I taped off the top and bottom, so they will end up looking like this. Again, this is just a commercial pot from, I think it was Home, no, Lowe's is usually where I go to, okay? And then one of the things, and I'm gonna base coat the saucer so that you can see how to do that. Um, I do have a blog with the prep video for the tile, how I did it in the base coating and stuff. And then I'm gonna show you all the brush strokes tonight on this. I even put it on a little ceramic ornament. I thought that would be a very cool ornament. So we'll see how much time we've got um, to do that. So what I used for the base coat on this one, my original one, the cup and saucer, I had white as the background. So I'm using the color stroke white. That's our opaque underglaze. That's why I chose it. Three coats, it's opaque. And I thought, well, I'm going to do a different color on this one. So I used... Uh, and I probably put it away. No, here it is. The CS 642 Whisper Blue. So it's like a gray blue, and I thought that would be different. And I like blues, so I decided to go with that. This one I put the white on, so you'll be able to see it when it comes out of the kiln uh, when I get in enough things to fire, okay? So put the tape on there, and then I'm going to just show you how to apply the base coat. We're going to be using... Uh, the CC 140 Cobalt Blue Color Concentrate for our brush strokes. So always shake your product before you start to make sure everything's mixed up well. And one of the things that I'm not sure that a lot of people tell you, you kind of assume that people know stuff, and with so many new people, um, I have to stop and think, okay, they probably don't know that. Of course, always wipe your piece down. You don't want to saturate it, but wipe it down to remove the dust. I'm using uh, one of our fan brushes, like the number, this says number 10, 8, we have 6s, all different kinds of sizes. Okay, so depending on what size your piece is, once again, always use the largest brush possible so that you have a smooth application. Now, one of the things that I do is I add water to my first coat. So I'm just getting a brush load of water, thinning that product down. The color stroke down and what the water does is allow it to seep in and bond with whatever clay body you're working on whether it's something that's hand built or cast or like these commercial pieces try to go in the same direction or the direction of the piece um, if you get a hair just roll it out I'm gonna grab a little bit more water add it to what's left here and you would apply three coats. When it's dry, then you can transfer the pattern onto the piece. So, and I'll go over transferring also. I should have left something. I've got a little spot there, but I'm not, I'm, I think it's something that was on it. It's not a hair, I thought it was at first. Two coats, let that dry, then put your third coat on. If you put more than two coats of anything, I don't care if it's a brush stroke, or you're applying a solid area or like this where we're base coating. If you're doing that and you're trying to put three coats on immediately, one right after the other, the third one is going to wipe off some of what you're put on. So let that dry and then come back and put another coat on. Okay. So your patterns are in, out on the blog page. Um, the video for the prep on this one is there. Okay. Um, I put a link also to the pattern pack out there and it is called terracotta strokes okay 
So the packet is out there. Um, it retails at twelve fifty. I marked it down to eight or eight fifty. So you can pick up the the pattern guide. It's a downloadable. You get um, you know all your brush strokes that you're going to be doing, the application photos and everything in there. Okay. And it is a like I said a downloadable PDF. Okay. So once you have your pattern, put your pattern underneath it. Take a pencil and and copy your pattern off. Then you're going to go over to your piece, place your tissue where you want it. And if it's something like this where it's round, you can in cut into this to create like pleats, I guess you would call it. And then take either, I prefer using the Stadler Tri Plus Fine Liner. On this tile, I had to use, for whatever reason, I did end up using the Sharpie Ultra Fine Marker. Okay. Hey, Eddie. Hey, Britt. Thanks for joining. Buckeye, Arizona. I bet you're warmer than we are. <laughs> We've had awful winds. Uh, last night they started like 40 mile hour winds and it's been crazy. And then the Statler Tri Plus Fine Liner is the other one. It has like a Sharpie point on it. Okay. This one I've kind of worn down. So when you place the pattern, and I'm not going to really trace anything, but place it here and go over your pencil line slowly and it bleeds through onto your piece that fires off in the kiln if you end up not painting everything you've transferred it'll just fire off don't worry about it okay and you can keep reusing those patterns until you rip it so i've used some you can see this one i've used a lot so what i ended up doing was um when you have when i have something round i will take a pencil and of course this is on a you know but I divided at the top. So I've got pencil marks here and here. And then I turned it in front of myself. And I put one here and here. So now when I'm looking down, just so you understand how I got this on the pot to begin with. So up here on the top, I kind of said, okay, here's the center of that division. And then I flipped it over here. And then I kind of looked at my distance from the top and the bottom and I transferred. So I did that for each one. So then I stood it back up. I centered it off based upon my markings, put it on, transferred it. Then I went back. The reason this one has so much use to it, I went back and I just transferred this little motif because I thought, well, that might be fun to kind of have as a filler where you could just freehand something in there. So that's kind of cool. Okay. So you can use those patterns over and over. And then I just uh, did some brush strokes on the corners to make it fill in. So I'm going to quickly add the third coat on this. It seems to be dry enough. Soft mop or fan brush is what you need. And then when it's dry, then you can transfer your pattern. Okay, anybody got any questions about that? And I am by myself. Uh, Jenny is having dinner with her husband, and rightfully so. Uh, I told her not to worry about me tonight. So on this one, I'm thinking that I'll probably put, it's not going to really show. Um, I could just do leaves in there, but you could put one on this side and one on that side. And then you could do a um, colored border with the blue if you wanted. Okay. So that's how that's done. Hello. Finally got, yeah, sorry. Hi, Angela. <laughs> Some Facebook, I don't know whether it's working out there or not. If somebody wants to go look, you can. Um, it seems to be a problem. And Facebook has changed a lot of rules, so that's kind of the reason that I'm having some issues. I have to kind of go through a back door to do it. And yeah, I'm just, I don't know. So anyway, all right, so I'm wiping this out because I need to use the center of my palette uh, for my brush strokes okay let me I forgot to grab paper towels if that's wet in there it's just going to beat up your color okay so keep that in mind all right i'm going to use a number six square shader this is the 5200s number six these are our brushes all the products and brushes can be found on the website i'll always wet your brush blot out the moisture just it's kind of like when you wash your hair you guys if you're on here all the time you hear me saying this wet the brush just like you have to wet your hair before you apply shampoo to it same same principles okay 
I am going to put um, a towel so I don't bang on this tile, okay? So I'm going to shake my CC140, okay, cobalt blue. You could do any color. Maybe you want to do greens, especially if you put a white background. Or if you want to uh, be more southwest, you could do uh, yellows or oranges. I mean, you can do pretty much anything you want to do. Okay, so I'm going to put some of that out. Remember that these are the translucent underglazes. Uh, they're a one-stroke type product in the fired world. So those of you that are one-stroke acrylics, don't get them confused. But same principles would apply with your um, acrylics, okay? The darker the color, the thicker the product. And I think that is throughout the industry on fired or non-fired. It seems like darker colors are always thicker. So you may need to add... A drop of water to that so what I do to add water is I just take the handle of my brush stick it in my water basin over here and bring a dot of water and just thin it down okay so that and if you were loading two colors maybe you were doing a light blue and a dark blue um, you would want to make sure that both colors are the same consistency or you will not get a proper load on your brush okay all right, so we're going to do what's called uh, floating color. It's not a float stroke. That is not, a, that is not anything. You're floating the color, and you're using water as your carrier, okay? Always remember to keep the brush where you can read the writing of the brush towards you, because then I will always corner load this bottom corner in that color, and I won't make a mistake and have blue on both sides of my brush. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, let me do, let's see, palette and overhead. Okay, so you can see my palette over here now. I think that'll work. So I've got my water basin. I'm going to get into my water, dampen my brush again, and I'm going to drag off and drag off to remove the excess water. It also shapes the brush so that it's flat. So I'm dragging on the flat side of the brush. I had someone the other day, uh, yesterday or the day before, ask me what's a flat brush. And so a flat brush is also, this is called a flat, it's called a square shader, and it's because of the shape of it. Okay, flat meaning it's pinched at the ferrule here to create a flat. A round brush is round in shape versus square. Okay, so hopefully if you've never done brush strokes, that explains the difference. Liners are longer. Okay, so liners are a longer hair. We'll be using that one later. But a flat or a square shader is what this one's called. Some people call it different things. Okay, so water load, drag off the edge of the water bowl to achieve that flat chisel. Turn the writing towards you. Corner load. Okay, so I'm just the corner, or we say like 13 hairs, a third of the brush, and then go to the middle of your palette and blend, blend, blend quickly, flip the brush over, and blend color next to color. Sometimes I do that a couple of times, okay? So now when I put down the brush, I've got dark and it's going to water. Hopefully that makes sense if you're new, okay? And I'm wiping that on my apron because I don't have another paper towel out here. So I'm going to rinse, drag off. Just make sure there's no water also. Here's another little tip on the ferrule of your brush. The ferrule is the metal portion, because if that water goes down, which your brush is aiming down, so that's what it's going to do, um, it's going to flood into your piece. Okay? So I'm going to corner load. I have the writing of the brush towards me. Blend, flip, and blend. So if you keep in that same spot, you'll always have that. First thing we're going to do is these outside little petals or motif. And I'm going to move that so you can see that one there. You can do these a couple of ways. You can go this direction or you can come at it from this direction. So I'm going to press down, fan out the brush, and then stop at that line of my pattern. Okay. I'm going to rinse my brush, a lot of rinsing for every one. If you feel like you've got too much water or to clean the water off your ferrule, I'm just going to roll it there on the top, but I didn't misshape my brush. 
writing is towards me, corner load, about a third of the brush or 13 hairs. And now you can flip the brush over and slide down the other side. So press it down, come around and stop. So that is a float of color. And that's what it ends up looking like over here. Okay. Rinse the brush. Now we have a full shape. So you can do this in half and half, or you can try to go all the way around. Either one will work. Water load, drag off, make sure there's no water on my ferrule. If you feel like you didn't get a nice chisel, you can go like this on both sides and then get that chisel edge. Let me get it where you can see it. See it there on the palette cam? Okay. Writing of the brush towards me. Corner. Blend. Blend. And I'm going to slide it up. So I'm going to start down here at the stem. Press down. Come around at the top. And I'm going to stop. And then I'm going to turn it. I'm going just back to my palette. I'm not reloading with water. I have plenty of water. I'm just grabbing more color that's on the center there and go into the other side. Isn't that pretty? So, so simple. Just a simple little motif. This is um, similar to like the Delph type stuff. I should have got my Delph plate down and showed you guys. I did one probably 20 years ago. And as long as you use one color, and that's all we're going to use, different ways of using the color gives you different looks. If it's solid and a liner, that's what the stem is done with. The little commas is done with solid. You floated the color on these, and then I'm going to show you how to do little hat pen strokes. The leaves are just water and corner, just like we're doing, and you just do a little wedge stroke. Okay, so there's different ways, and if you go over this again with the same color, it's going to intensify it, and it would be darker. So that's another way to um, create a different shade but you're using the same color now eventually you'll have to wipe out the center of this palette and clean it off because it'll get dirty okay so on the leaves I'm still got the writing of the brush towards me I a lot of times I'll flip and put the dark down towards where the stem would be okay and I'm going to start at an angle press pull pull and lift off the chisel edge very slowly so that is the same stroke we did here, we just did a wedge stroke or a leaf stroke is what they call it in the one stroke world. So that's what these leaves are here. So the color is just on one side. We're going to outline the other side and that gives it uh, a nice look. Constantly rinse. Any questions? I haven't looked up. No, no questions yet. You guys are quiet. <laughs> so I'm shaping the brush. That's just something that I've always done. Grab more color, blend that, and then I'm going to go to this leaf. Do you want to see um, maybe the side camera? Now that you've seen, let's do this and see. Uh, this may be too big. Let me see if I can lift it up a little bit. Okay, so get the right angle. Ready, and press down, all the way down on the bristles, pull, pull, lift, lift, and come off the chisel. So I'm not turning the brush, I'm pressing down. Remember, who knows what a brush stroke is made up of? What three things? Can anybody answer me in the chat? A brush stroke is a combination of what, what, and what? If the first person that I see answer it correctly, they're going to win a number six square shader, which is like a $20 brush. This is a Kalinsky square shader. Okay, so I'm going to go over here. I flipped my brush over. Color is towards the stem. Press, pull, and lift. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the overhead now that you've seen that. Nobody's answering me. Of course, there's a delay. So maybe. Can anybody put it in? Anybody can win. I'm not going to restrict it because I know some of you on here know the answer. But I'm not going to restrict you because we don't have that many on tonight. Corner load. Blend. Blend. A brush stroke is a combination of what? Press, pull, lift, lift. 
So water is your friend. Water is your friend. Let's zoom in just a little bit. Uh oh, somebody's writing. Paint, water, brush. Mm, partially. Press, pull, lift. That's the type of stroke. But what is a brush stroke? A combination of what? I know that Lucy and Anne and Robin should all know this. They've heard me say it many, many times. So I'm patting it to get a nice chisel edge on it. Writing the brush towards me. Corner load. Remember, you're doing 13 hairs or a third of the brush. Blend. Blend. Pressure, water, lift. Nope. Keep thinking. What is a brush stroke? Press, pull, lift. So I'm not flipping or I'm not turning. I'm not what we call hooking the brush. A brush stroke is a common... You're going to win a number six square shader, like a $20 value, if you come up with the exact words. I did this early in the broadcast. Usually I wait to do that. Corner load blend a brush stroke is flip my brush over press pull and lift pressure viscosity density <laughs> that's great Teresa but no <laughs> paint pressure position but you do one different than one stroke mm. almost you're almost there I'm not sure why I can never remember this. Yeah, you should, Eddie. <laughs> as many times as I ask it. As many times as I ask. What is a brush stroke made up of? Think of it generically. What is it? it doesn't matter if you're doing comma strokes, whether you're floating color. It's a combination of three things. Three things. All right, so let's go over here and do this guy. So what I like to do is all of the same stroke or the same motif at the same time. I've got enough water. I'm just grabbing color and I'm not sure that's got quite a bit of color on it. So I'm going to wipe out my center so that I have a fresh palette. Okay. And dry that. Anybody get it? Is it Trisha? Is Am I saying that right? T-R-I-C-I-A. Trisha M. Color, motion, and pressure. Guess what? You are correct. I say it. Color, pressure. Or color. Brushstroke is color, pressure, and the motion. So the color you put on it, whether it's one or two colors, the amount of pressure you put down, and then the motion, whether you're curving it for a common stroke or you're just doing this wedge stroke. So color, pressure, and motion. Color, pressure, and motion. So Trisha, be sure in Facebook messenger me and send me your information so that I can mail that off to you and your email so that I can uh, give you tracking, okay? Paint, pressure, lift, almost. So color, color you put on the brush, the amount of pressure you put down determines how large the stroke is and then the motion, whether you're pulling it or you're doing a pressure stroke or you're curving it for a comma. So color, pressure, and motion is what I was looking for. All right. So Trisha, just in case this doesn't save the chat and I uh, forget, make sure you mess, you know, private message me on Facebook. Okay. All right. So I'm going to flip my brush over, press, and come off. And I'm doing it very slowly. I, I don't do it quickly. And you should do it the same exact way. You have to methodically think about what you're doing and where you're going. Have a plan where you're going to. Okay. I do not have Facebook. Okay. If you don't have Facebook, then get a pencil. My email is on the screen. Earth at gmail.com. Or the website is there and you can email me from the website or you can call me on that phone number and give me your information. Okay? I forgot about that. Some people don't do Facebook. Okay, so I'm going to start down here. I'm going to do the outside of the flower. Press down. So color, pressure, determine how large I was making that stroke. And the motion I was pressing and pulling. That's your motion. 
color, pressure, and motion. Constantly dragging, wiping off my ferrule to make sure there's not a drip or a little dot of water that could fall down on my piece because it's going to make everything run. So I turned my piece around and now I'm going to press and go up that side. And even though it got wet in here, that's okay. Water's your friend because your next stroke's going to be inside that. Okay. All right. So Trisha, did you understand? Let me know that you definitely. So on the screen at the bottom there is all my information. Okay. So definitely email me or call me. Press down. Pull, pull, pull. And I can go all the way around if I want. But I may come back and just kind of start here and go up also. So you can do it in two strokes or you can do it one. Whichever works for you. Okay. Water load. Drag off to a point. I'm going to shape the brush. I'm going to take away any water that's there. Corner load. One third of the brush. Blend, blend, blend. So don't go blend, blend. No, fast. You want to get it done, get it over with. Okay. Now, you should, most of the time you're going to pull your brush strokes towards you, but if you're a lefty, you may want to push. So I'm going to push this one. So press, pull, lift, lift, come off to the chisel point. Okay. So I'm going to grab some more. I know I've got enough water and you'll learn that as you go. Press, pull, and lift. Okay. But 99% of the time, I usually pull towards me. It seems to be more comfortable for most folks out there. Uh, but left-handed people do push. And I'm not going to do any left-handed painting tonight. I can, but I'm not going to ruin this pot. <laughs> it's three Ps. There you go. Okay. For Donna. Donna Dewberry. Right, right. Paint, pressure, and position. Okay. See, everybody teaches differently. So, and that's okay. But... In the, um, you know, I learned from the toll painting market many, many moons ago. And then um, I call him my ceramic dad, Mr. David Hoff. Uh, he's the grandfather of ceramics, the master. And uh, that's who I learned a lot of my stuff from. Press, pull, and lift. Okay. I'm going to come over here and do this one. And, you know, a lot of times when I develop a pattern or a technique packet, I do a lot of repetition in it because the time you're done, you should have it down. So there is a method to my madness, I say. Got it. Okay, great, Tricia. I will get that out to you ASAP. Uh, it's been a crazy, I wasn't even sure I was going to be able to go on tonight. Um, my mother's in the hospital and... Uh, better today. It was a long day yesterday. Um, I got to take care of my new grandson that is two months old all day and in the midst of that my mother had a crisis and has been in the hospital and will be there at least through tomorrow. So it uh, it was a challenging day and a late night. I was from 6 to 1 a.m. yesterday. I'm ready to go to bed. I am tired. All right, any questions about what I'm doing? I'm using the color concentrates to do the one stroke or the brush strokes, okay? And the reason I'm doing that is because they are, I've got a little something on the end, um, translucent, and they're thinner, and I like to use them for the brush strokes. You could do this on greenware. You don't have to put a base coat on. I just find on bisque, which this is a terracotta bisque from the store, um, it doesn't eat up my brushes, first of all, because the bisque using, you know, a $20 brush rubbing across a rough surface. If you put down a base coat first, that really helps and it will lengthen the life of your brushes. So that's just another little tip. And, it, you know, in the acrylic world, we base coat uh, areas or our canvas or whatever so that it makes the strokes glide. So the same principle applies to here. You were on Facebook, couldn't figure out why you weren't seeing 
my comments, but Deb Gardner helped. Okay, so is it is it live, Talisa, on Facebook? Because I couldn't find it. So I couldn't find the... Um, let me scroll out here real quick and see if it's actually popped up now. See, I don't see it on my page, so I'm not sure... I don't know. I'm not going to worry about it. It'll be there. It's always on YouTube for replay. So, okay. So wipe off that extra little um, water that's on your ferrule. Corner load. Remember, I'm keeping the writing of the brush towards me. Blend quickly. Blend. Flip it over. So you don't go down into the puddle. You keep the color on this to the center there on the same side so that you don't end up with blue or whatever color you're using all the way across the brush. So nice and slow, press, pull, and lift. So color, the amount of pressure will determine how big that stroke is, and then the way I pull it, or the motion I use with the brush, creates the brush stroke. Okay? Sending good wishes for your mom. Thank you so much. Yeah, she's, it's, it's a long story. Anyway. It was a hectic day when you got a two-month-old crying and fussing, <laughs> and then you got a 79-year-old on the other end of the spectrum that's got issues. So, okay, so I'm going to start up here and do this flower, press, pull, and come around. So I'm floating the color along the outside, and then I'm going to turn it. And I'm going to go the other direction, constantly rinsing. So in my water basin, I have one area that's dirty and one that's a little more clean. And I've got clean over here. So I'll rinse dirty and then I'll go into my clean ones when I load so that I don't get the color all the way across. And that's just another little thing that if you're new to brush strokes, you may not know that. So I want to make sure I tell you. We, you know, those of us that's been doing this 35 years or so, you take things for granted and you forget that you guys may not know what I'm talking about. And if you get frustrated, you're not going to try and do it, right? So we want to make sure you understand and it's easy. So press, pull, and come around and stop. The pattern is out on the blog page. Yes. Um, the technique sheet, there's a link to it. I did not do it as a free pattern, but I did put it on sale. So yes, you can get to it from that blog. And it also has the video on how I prepped the tile. And then this video will also be there. It should be there right now. I put the link out there. So I did half of it or a little more than half. And now I'm going to go back and I'm going to come up that other side. So everybody always thinks I paint so fast. I This is the way I paint. I go slow. I have to stop and you think about it. But I think that's because of teaching so many years that if I tell you to do something, I better be doing it myself. Now, I can paint pulling and pushing and all that. And I need to write this off. But I want you to make sure you understand. Okay. So corner load. Blend blend and now let's do some leaves here so I'm gonna do my lower ones first because I may have to bring my stroke further out depending on how large my stroke is your pattern is a guide it doesn't mean that that's what you have to use it's just to help you guide and stay within that shape and similar in size but you can definitely go larger or you can go smaller either one Press, pull, and lift. Now, take a look at this. You can see that I loaded differently for each one of those. A little little less on this one. A little more here, meaning further across, and even more here. So you understand the more color you put, or the further across you get on that brush, you're going to have more color in that area. Okay? Okay, so truth, okay, you've got tall vase. Yeah, this would, I mean, just repeat it over and over. You can also, darn it, um, take and enlarge the pattern or reduce it. I don't know that I'd go too much smaller. 
because um, it'll get tight with your strokes. If you go smaller or larger, just adjust your brush size, okay? That's the biggest thing. So you may bump it up to like a size 8 or a size 10 brush versus a size 6 that I'm using. Taking the water off the ferrule, make sure I have a nice chisel edge, writing the brush towards me. I mean, these are things that I'm saying to myself in my head every time I do a stroke. And you should do the same. And it helps you, before long, it'll become natural. And you won't have to do that. But if you say it to yourself, you will definitely learn it. Okay? So you could change the colors. You could do, um, you know, a totally different color, whatever you wanted. Somebody said, you know, it looks like Talavera. Um, actually, I think it was Shelly Long, one of my teachers out of Denver, that came up with this pattern years ago. And I think we taught some at the shows. John, you may know. We may have taught it at Orlando one year. I can't remember. But we did it on the terracotta that I got from Italy when I worked for that company. And I have quite a bit in my storage. I have some of these 12 by 12 tiles. If anybody's interested, I could get you a price on it. But you could go you know, to the hardware store. They may have some there too. Um, I just wouldn't buy cheap. It's kind of like the clay pots. Um, yeah, you just don't want to buy too cheap that it ends up, you know, cracking on you or something. And I got a hair loose there. And I'm going to wipe again. I'm pretty picky about that. I want to make sure I can see my blend on my strokes. A little bit more color. That's just me. I'm a fanatic about it. Press, pull, and lift. And we've got one more up here at the top. I'm just going to grab a little bit more color. Blend again. Press, pull, and lift. So does it help when I do the different cameras? I think it does. The side, the palette, so that you understand everything about what you're doing. Because that's the only way you're going to feel comfortable with it and succeed. And if you succeed, then I succeed. Now, you could do this with color strokes. But remember, those color strokes that we base coated with, these are thicker products. Have I done strokes? Yeah. Do I like it? No. But if that's all you had, sure, you could use them. And remember, if I'm using 140, there's a 640, and it's got the same pigment. So you could use it. Okay, and there's more colors in the color strokes, so you may uh, find a color out there that you really like, and we don't have it in the color concentrates. We got 41 colors, and there's 61 in the color strokes. And don't let me forget, oops, now see what I did? I just went halfway across that brush. Can you see that? Nope, we're rinsing it off way too much. So I'm using all three areas of my water bowl to make sure that my brush is clean. And if it's not, I will be able to see it right there on my palette. I'll, I would see like blue there. And you do have to make sure that you keep enough product in that well that you can get a hold of it, you know, just by corner loading. Because you don't want to jam the brush down. See, the brush is not changed the shape. So when I'm loading it, it's just barely touching the blue. I know if I had white on there, you'd be able to see it better. Press, pull it down, stop, and come off. Well, thank you, Talissa. I'm glad you liked the videos. I try to teach the way I wished I had been taught early on. Um, and I know sometimes I don't finish things, but hopefully, instead of having a finished piece, you get more instructions. I'd rather you know how to do it. And that's what I tell them when I do in-person classes. It, it doesn't matter if you finish. If you learn the technique and you've got that, then you're going to be able to go and do it and succeed on your own. And I'm always constantly looking at my brush to make sure my writing's there before I go back over here and grab more because otherwise I'll have it all the way across my brush and then I've just ruined up, ruined up ruined my stroke okay how are you determining the shaded side you know that's a good question 
So these two petals, if you want to call them petals, are underneath. So the outside, you could do it on the inside, but I want to show off the stroke. So it is the outside. Now on the leaves, I just usually turn my color over and make sure the dark corner, which would be the corner that has the writing. So it's going to be this side of the brush. I'm going to flip it over and make sure that dark corner is next to the stem or near the center of the petal if you were doing, you know, a different type of flower. And if you've got petals that are really overlapping each other, and I'll see if I've got, oh, surely I've got a piece of paper somewhere. I'll show you in just a second. Let me finish. And I'm starting to kind of get down here where I need more product. So I may have to put more out there because I feel like I'm kind of digging to load it. And that's not a good thing because that's where I'm going to end up losing the shape of my square shader if I'm not careful. Blend, blend. I had enough water. So I'm turning it over. Okay. And this color, this side has the color over here. Okay. So the writing, my colors here, I'm going to flip it over. Now it's on that side and that side is going to be near my stem. Press, pull and lift. Now the other way to look at it is here's the top of your pot and the lower side as far as the leaves go your petals aren't going to be that the lower side would get the darker color so let's go back and look at these see i didn't i this one i did it this one i did so it doesn't really matter i mean if it was on something that you wanted to be perfect about it that's how you would de determine it i'm just rotating it and turning it in different directions so that you can see it different ways okay so I turn the brush over there's my stem and pull out okay so I'm going to do a couple more and then I want to show you uh, the other things so that you've got that I'm almost done with this press pull and lift so press pull and lift and I'm just grabbing what's there because I know I have enough moisture or water in my brush. I'm just grabbing that. And then I'm going to flip it over. And I'm going to press, pull, and lift. Press, pull, and lift. See, I didn't curve it. I'm just pressing down. So color, the amount of pressure determines how large that stroke is and the motion, how I'm dragging it will determine the stroke. When you rinse your brushes out and you're done, make sure I wipe it on my paper towel till I don't see any, just keep rinsing until you don't see any color. Oops, I've got a stroke there. Hold on, let me grab that one. And when... I'm working on these because it's such a, the, the underglaze is dry. Um, it turns your hands white and my hands just, uh, it's makes it so dry, but clay of any kind or ceramics does that for most people. So I apologize. My hands probably look pretty rough. Okay. I think we're good on that. So, um, I had this one here. I'm not going to do it right now, but like I said, this is just a bisque ornament. I think I got this at Bisque Imports years and years ago. So I put three coats of the white on there and I'll end up doing that ornament and show it to you later. Okay. All right. So let's get a little more color out. So we're only using one color, the CC 140 Cobalt Blue. So we use the six square shader. Now I'm going to pick up a two round. This is our 5,000 numbered size two always wet your brush blot out the moisture and then again this is a little thick i'm going to grab a dot of water with the handle of my brush just kind of mix that up so that it's nice and creamy and smooth um actually i'm going to use the liner first i'm not going to use i'm going to grab some of this i need to put stem in so that i know when I do my strokes for the commas, then I'm not going to be on top of the stem. Okay, so I, on this one, so I'm loading the brush, 
and I'm pulling out. I'm pulling, pulling, pulling. We call it like making little trees. So what you're doing is coating all the bristles of the brush so that you can go longer distances. You don't just load the tip of the brush, and that is so common with most people. They put a little tiny bit on the tip like this, okay, and they expect to go do something. Well, you haven't loaded it. You don't put the shampoo on your hair just on the outside. You rub it in, you work it into your hairs so that you can get everything clean, right? Same difference applies to this, okay? So fully load, and now you've got a thick, a thin, and a thick. So color, fully loaded, pressure, and motion. So the more I press down, I'm gonna get just a little bit more on my brush. So press, pull, lift, 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 press again, pull, pull, and come around. Okay, if you needed to, you could do that into two strokes. That would be absolutely fine. Okay, so then to finish our leaves off, we're gonna pull a center vein, and we already have color on one side, so I'm just gonna kinda create the other side, okay? That also helps fix anything. I wouldn't do both sides. You don't want it so thick and heavy that it takes away from the rest of your design. There's a reason why I've done it the way I've done it, okay? Because you've already got that thick line here for your stem. You don't need that much color. You wanna keep it light and airy, just like the leaves are done with water and color, okay? I like to anchor with my pinky. That's just something I've always done. Some people say they can't do that, and that's okay. You may find putting your arm up on like a roll of paper towels or a stack of books, sometimes that helps steady, press and lift, press and lift. So I like to do irregular because then I don't have to be perfect, and if I have a wiggly line, then I don't have to worry about it. Press and wiggle. Sometimes this is hard for me to talk and do it. Press. So I'm just, I'm on the very tip. Okay, so when I go around these guys, I'm just going to be on my tippy toes. And I can't talk when I do that, sorry. It's just one of those things. Okay, now... You see these little guys right here? These are called hat pin strokes. Let me see if I have a piece of paper. I've got a book here. Okay. Let's use this for something else. All right, so when you're doing the hat pins, make sure you're loaded, fully loaded, then the color if you need to. If it isn't flowing off your brush, you're going to, I'm going to do it sideways so you can see it. You're going to pull a real skinny line and then press down and lift straight up. Pull, sit, and lift. Pull, sit, and lift. Let's do the side camera. Okay, so you can see it. Okay, so watch... So I've got a point on my brush. I think you can see that. And I can't zoom the side. Sorry, guys. So pull, press, and lift. So a, this is a pressure stroke. And all I've done is add the tail to it. And that's called a hat pin stroke. It's fun to do because you can curve them and come out different ways. And you're just barely touching the surface. But see how fun that is? Kind of cool. Hopefully that helps you see how to do that stroke. Let's get rid of that. Okay. Any questions on that one? Constantly grab some water and thin that down. You don't thin the whole puddle of color when you're doing line work. Because it's going to evaporate. So just thin one little corner and that's all you need to do. Okay, so I've got all the lines on there. So on this one here, I would start it right here. I'm going to press down, pull, pull, lift, 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 
lift as I come into the curve. If you don't lift, you're not going to be able to curl it around. Center vein and wiggle. Center vein and wiggle. I always have like a little hook on the end of my leaves. That's, I think, a signature thing. People know it's mine. Okay, so start up here. Press, pull, lift, lift, lift. End of the turn and stop. Grab some more. Pull, wiggle, pull, wiggle. You get the idea? Fun? You think you can do this, you guys? Talk to me. Yes, no, maybe, with a little practice. Practice on paper. Get you some watercolors so you don't waste your product. Or practice with some acrylics, which are cheaper okay pattern is a guide a suggestion i went out and bigger because that's what happened that's what my brush did it had a mind of its own that's okay that line will fire off you don't have to worry about that center vein pull in your side do you see how i'm constantly turning so that i'm pulling those strokes towards me and making it easier don't work away from yourself where you you got to be able to see where you're going with that stroke that's a good way to think about it. See where you're going. Not near like you. <laughs> what, what are you talking about, Lucy? You don't think you can do this? Yes, you can. You can do this. I want to see. What's, what's uh, Donna tell you? See your practice strokes? I want you guys to practice on paper and show me. Or send it to me if you don't want to post it. And I'll tell you, I can generally look. I know I'm not there with you. But as a teacher, I can look at something and tell you exactly what you're doing wrong. And that's just from experience over the years. Okay, so I'm outlining each one of these. See how I stopped and went back around on the other side. Grabbing a little bit more. Let's thin it down a little bit. Now we're going to do... Oh, I didn't do my hat pins over here. I showed you how to do them and then forgot to do them. So I'm going to start here, pull, press, and lift. And I'm going to load probably for every one of those. You have to have it loaded the proper way to get that pressure stroke at the end. If you don't have enough product on it, you're never going to get it. Yeah, that one was not the best. I was talking. See, I'm telling you, there's certain things that sometimes you can't talk. It makes a difference. You're not, you can't paint nearly like I, well, you, you know, practice, practice, practice. I didn't learn overnight. I've been doing this. I've been doing brush strokes, like I said, for 35 plus years. Um, I learned doing, um, Duncan Ceramics had uh, some designs by Maureen McNaughton. I know you uh, acrylic girls know that name. And she did some designs for Duncan. And I have a birdhouse up on the top shelf of my bookcase over here. But I can't reach it. It's too tall and behind stuff. And it has these kind of brush strokes in it. And curl. So when you come in the curl, you have to lift the brush where you're only on the tip. If you've got too much pressure, it's you can't make the turn. And it gets sloppy. So keep that in mind when you're doing that. Okay. All right. So Robin, I can't do the liner either. <laughs> yes, you can. Yes, you can. Practice. Well, not right now because of your arm, but you can. Press, pull, lift, 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 and curl. Center. Pressure. So there, I'm just up on the tippy toes when I'm doing the leaf. Just up on the tippy toes. You getting the hang of it, you think? Oh, Lordy. Hold on one second. I had a call from my uncle. I hope everything's okay with my mom. Um, now that's going to stress me out. Sorry, guys. I, hope, I talked to him earlier, so hopefully. Press. Pressure is thicker. Raise up, so less pressure. Now pressure again. 
and lift, 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 and curl. And I can't look up when I'm doing that. I think you can see it because I'm tilting uh, the piece. I don't want to have my hand over where you can't see something, but I think you can see it. I don't know why I did that one. I, I did those backwards from what I was doing the rest of them. Because do you notice I have to outline this side now? Okay. And just make sure, like I'm working on the towel, um, make sure you don't have wet product on the other side, you know, being a round object. Okay, can you thicken the CCs with screen painting medium to use them with the quill pen? You don't have to. You don't have to thicken it to use a quill pen. But Talisa, are you using on glass or are you doing ceramic? Tell me what you're wanting to work on. Yeah, no, I thanks, Lucy. But we're we're doing this. I can call back in a minute. I'm sure. If it's an emergency, they'll call me back. I think I know what he's calling about. Okay, so. Talissa, I know it's delayed. Let me know if you're glass or ceramic. If you're glass, you do not have to thicken it. You can just use it. Ceramics. Honey, when you're putting a quill pen down on the bisque, it's going to scrape the pen, and I don't think it'll work. Um, you know what I'm saying? It'll tear it up. What about on top of the glazed? Like on here. You could... Um, if you did that, okay, so you've got a glaze surface and you do quill pen work, you would need to probably airbrush clear over that. If it's that thick coming off a quill, it's going to blister. Because um, what you would be doing is kind of like a Majelica, which is, this is an underglaze Majelica. But, so the, like this color being dark blue, it's going to be really rough because it needs glaze over it and if you try to glaze over the top of this with this already being glazed you're going to wet it and it's going to move across the piece but if you could airbrush some clear over it test it yes that would be the only way i would do it if it were me so hopefully that makes sense if it doesn't um, get a hold of me and we'll we'll talk on the phone okay so a little bit a little bit all right so we're almost ready for comma strokes. So start up here, press down, pull, lift, 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 and curl. So I keep my brush, you notice I keep going over and loading. I like to keep my brush fully loaded. If I were just doing a bunch of fine work, I could keep going. But when I have to do that thick and thin, I need to reload to get enough on my brush to start that stroke back here. So press, pull, lift, pressure again, lift again, curl, curl, and stop. Okay, yeah, you can try it. I, I think just to get fine lines, it's just a matter of practice, okay? Just practice and the right brush. Do you have this brush? Because it's amazing. Even if it, I mean, I'm not being prejudiced. <laughs> if you like smaller, okay, so this is the zero, same, same things, 3,600. So different lengths. So if you like shorter, I like my liners about a half an inch long. That's my personal preference. I don't like the, the script liners that are really long uh, for certain brushwork I do, but the majority I don't. So if you've got the right brush and you can, I think anybody that's on here can tell you the brush will make a huge difference. And this brush is not that much, um, you know, unless you live overseas and the shipping, that kind of thing. I completely understand. Oops. See, I got to quit talking. Do you see that? So I was outside my line. I don't like that. So I'm going to go back and I'm just going to thicken that up a little bit. Now, what happens is. Hold on, let me finish this without talking. So now I've got a little bit thicker here. I'm going to come over here and make an area that's a little bit thicker also. 
so my eye is not drawn to that one. If you add another stroke somewhere else that's the same thickness, then it won't stand out like a sore thumb, basically. And what did I do? I forgot to do my... I didn't even go around that one. See, I got to talking. Does that make sense, guys? Okay, so pull, sit, and lift. Need more product. Bend it down a little bit more. Load that brush. I'm going to take some of that off the ferrule. Nice point. No, I still don't like that point. So pull, sit, and lift. Pull, sit, and lift. That's hard to say it and do it at the same time. So if anybody is on Facebook, I will go back and answer questions if I can find it, since I couldn't even find it on my page. Um, I think I'll just forget the link to the notification that I put out there and I'll just start a live live. So to speak instead of having it programmed in I think that's the way to do it so you can see the more times you do it hopefully the better you get so when you go into the curl there you got to lift the brush so that you can curve it around because otherwise you can't do that now, while I've got my liner out, I am going to go ahead and sign it just so that I have that. So you can do it with the same liner. And it takes practice. And I always date. Because I might have to give this away. Oh my gosh. Anybody want to win a flower pot? I don't need more samples. Since COVID and I'm not out there, it's, uh, I, I have storage units full of samples. <laughs> it's getting a little crazy. I need to have a sample sale. What do you guys think about that? How about a sample sale? I need to come on once a month and try to get rid of some samples. Okay, so I'm changed to the round. This is the 5000 number two. Fully loading it. I've thinned some color down. Just I've achieved a nice point. Okay, now you got to look at where you're curving. So make sure that you, you know, these curve this way, these curve this way. So I'm going to come back on the brush a little bit so that I keep that round. So pressure, pull, lift to a point. So brush stroke, color, the amount of pressure, and the motion. So I'm curving it. I'm making a comma stroke. More pressure, larger stroke. Less pressure, smaller stroke. So can you see that? I followed the link and was on it. Is that on Facebook? Okay, well, I couldn't get to it. Maybe it's because I'm the creator that it doesn't, it doesn't, I know it doesn't react the same for me as it does for you guys, which I think is, oh, I just forgot to do some line work. I forgot to do these little curls. Well, Robin, you're talking about the brushwork. It, you know, they're my brushes. They're made to a specific, you know, that I want them, so I better know how to use them, you know what I'm saying? Okay, so press, pull, and lift. Press, pull, and lift. Press, pull, and lift. And I'm constantly turning my work so that I can see where I'm going. If you can't see where you're going, how do you know when to stop, right? Press, pull, and lift. Press, pull, and lift. That one didn't have a very good tail. I tell you, I start talking and then I end up messing up.
You're welcome to pick me, Eddie. Now, wait a minute. You just won the Christmas ornament, didn't you? <laughs> I'll have to go. I'll have to scroll the comments on. Uh, I don't know. Does anybody know if there's a bunch of comments on Facebook? I'll have to go out and maybe maybe I'll have uh, Jenny get on and just do a spin and then I'll announce it later. That way it's I'm not being favorites or anything like that. I don't want anybody thinking I did it. So what do you think? Isn't that going to be the coolest flower pot? I just, I'm just i thinking I need to add some more curly cues and stuff in there too. I'm liking this. I just happen to have these sitting around. I've got some more. But I thought you guys might like this. It's just one color. And you're learning some strokes. And how to combine different strokes. So I can't wait to see what you guys create. And I don't care if it's just on paper with acrylics. I'd love to see what you're doing. Um, then that makes me know that what I did is something that you will use. And if you do it great or better than me, then I did my job. If you want help, all you got to do is message me, send me a picture, and I will be happy to critique it and let you know what I think. Okay. This is a, is the fanciest flower pot. Well, no, actually, if you go back and, and look at, um, I don't remember if I have it on this YouTube uh, page or not, but I have another YouTube that's just, it's got some acrylics. I don't have hardly any followers on it because I really don't promote it. I was going to separate it and then I thought, oh well, forget that. But anyway, there's, um, I did some flower pots uh, using multi-surface acrylics. And I know I posted them on those boards, but I did some fancy, I had some stencil work and then I did stroke work. Um, I ended up giving away a couple of them to some friends and then I have some in my living room. I made, I'm not a plant person. I, I, I do not have a green thumb, but when my husband passed, I got a lot of plants. So it gave me an excuse to make some pretty planters. And I thought that would be, it would be better for me to look at that than, you know, just the memory and get sad so I thought I'll just make some fancy little pots and that'll make me happy when I look at it I make it look so easy if I had a nickel every time somebody said that I would be rich but thank you it's just practice it's practice Elizabeth I mean like I said um, I've been doing this stroke work for 35 my oldest is 36 so I pretty much and I did it long before they were born also, but um, I was very fortunate. I got to stay home with my children and do my art. And then I told my husband at the time, when it becomes more than a hobby, you need to tell me. He was about five years too late. It was quite funny. Uh, Pat says, you covered so much space in a short time. You know, when you're in the rhythm, it, it's, it's easy to do. I mean, I think the longest part is putting the pattern on it and the base coat, in this case. I love to do brush strokes. Um, I, if you are into strawberries and leaves, I have a downloadable and PDF brush stroke video. I did it with the color concentrate, so any of you that have the concentrates and you're wanting, so just type in strawberry in the search bar. And I'll show you that in just a second. I want to show you those pieces out of the kiln, too. I can stop on this. We don't have to finish. I got one more to do. But um, The part I forgot was the little curl up here at the end. So let me show you that real quick, just so you understand. And always start from where it grows from. That's a good um, rule of thumb, too. So I'm just going to do a little curl there. And see, it was bigger. No big deal. It's okay. If I don't go do all of these right now, you know what will happen. I'll forget it. So this will have, when it's dry, which I usually glaze immediately 
after I do something because the old rule of thumb that some people have told you that you need to let it dry 24 hours before you glaze, mm, not. If it, I learned when I was with Colorobia from Bruce Locke and we missed the piece with water, let the water absorb, glaze because it's wet on wet. And a lot of people that dip glaze, they have problems with pinholes. If you will just mist your piece, okay, so I would mist it, and that shows you kind of what it's going to look like. When the wet look is gone, I go in with my brush. The reason you end up smearing color when you're glazing is because you're overworking the area. So you've got your fan brush, and I'm not going to do it on that, but you go one, two, three, and I have this on a couple of videos. It's at the end of the yellow rose, and there's another one, but one, two, maybe three. Load with your glaze. One, two, maybe three across to brush out any raised or bumpy areas, okay? But don't keep doing it back and forth because all you're doing is you're wetting what's underneath and you're moving it around, okay? You're gonna have a problem. Does that make sense? Hopefully it does. Okay, so let me um, set this aside. And I want to show you, so this is one of my Clay Share pieces that I'm going to demo. If you're in the Clay Share Prime uh, group, this is going to be uh, the Wednesday night piece. This is a Mako piece, and I did put a watercolor background. Don't think it's funky. It's got a yellowy green there um, background. So this is showing you how to layer the colors, how to add some shading that I've got on here. And this is using color strokes with the exception of the green, which is the concentrates and how to do the nice edge. Okay. So there's that one. I bet you want to see the butterfly, right? Who wants to see that one? Oh my, I don't have the green word tile one fired yet, but here is this one. Is that just fantastic? So you get kind of an ombre type effect. I'm going to show you how to use, this is going to be, let me get my schedule. I did print it out so I could tell you. Oh, uh, sure I did. Where did it go? Oh, oh. oh, there it is. So Wednesday night is the chili peppers. Friday on Clayshare Con, um, on their YouTube website. And on Facebook will be this on Friday. And I don't, let's see what my time is on Friday. I don't have my times. But I'll put a schedule out tomorrow. And then on Saturday, I'm going to do the peaches. That and I didn't bring that piece back here with me. But it's a textured rolling pin. And it's got the peaches on it. So showing you how you can do textured pieces and do detail. But isn't that pretty? It's just a shallow little plate. Isn't that great? <laughs> Yay for clay share. I know. Fun, fun, fun. Um, this particular one is using one of Sharon Hoppy's um, deep dish. I don't get, don't get me to tell you the exact name because she, because it's one of her forms. And then I think this is one of her templates too. Um, but here is that color wheel and the color wheel template is out on a blog. If you just search color wheel, you can have the template, the t put it on the tissue, transfer it. This happens to be um, Mako's stoneware. And I use the SW004 as the clear glaze. There's a couple of colors that could have used a third coat. They're a little dry, but it's a two coat. At least I know what happens with it. And look at the pinks and the purples. I had not tested those because I've been using the color stroke pinks and purples and they work great. But boy, now it may appear differently on your clay body. Everybody's clay body is different. So, but keep that in mind. I think that's pretty cool. And yes, you can airbrush clear glaze. Make sure you wear a mask, Elizabeth. You can airbrush these colors. These are awesome airbrushed. They're great to antique with. Go back and just search clay share on the website. And when you find it, it'll show you the clay share kit. Clayshare Con from last year, Clayshare Day, and all the videos or anything I give out free for those are listed on that blog page. And I am going to already start the blogs coming up for the new ones, and I'll have uh, copies. Because I videotaped all of these things, so I will put step-by-step -step videos 
and on my website and then they will have the actual um, live presentation on their uh, media spots okay and I'm getting ready to do the color stroke one on, on that same Mako disc so I've transferred my pattern and I started with my white because I had white out here earlier base coating so I'm working on the 60 you see they're smaller so you've got 60 colors and I had to use a four square shader where this one I used a six square shader okay if that kind of shows you so these and I do them that way because I want to see one two and three coats okay that I'm putting on there that's why I do it that way all right guys so what do you think did you enjoy this evening and you like the looks of this and here again here's let me back back off here is that tile kind of cool like I said if anybody's in I may have some more of these in storage because uh, I had quite a few different things but this is just from uh, Lowe's is where I got this and then I'll do something to the saucer see I didn't I'm not gonna paint where the stickers were because that'll fire off okay if I were going to do that, I'd put it in and fire it off and then come back and paint it. Okay. All right. Okay. It helped you. All right. Good. All right, guys. Um, you're probably bored with me by now. We've been on an hour. So um, we gave away a brush and let me switch back to me. Hi there. Uh, I got some new equipment. I've had it for months, but trying to get it to work. So I'm able to touch a little button. And switch cameras and it's so much easier than what I was doing before so I'm glad it was good information so take this back practice and I can't wait to see be a beautiful border around a plate square put it on four or do like I've done here on you know that tile that looks really good too so will you fire this too so this one because Eddie asked what am I gonna fire the clay pot to so what am I firing this one to this one will have my clear glaze over it because it is basically a terracotta earthenware and I will only go to an 06 on it. But if you're hand building something out of cone 56, then use, um, I would use the Mako SW004. Okay. You enjoyed it. Well, thank you, Anne. I appreciate that. Okay. All right. Well, you guys have a great rest of your Valentine's Day. Don't eat too much chocolate and uh, give all your loved ones a hug and kiss because we never are promised.